Now, how do we use the periodic table? Because this is our favorite tool as chemists. How do we use this to predict ion formation? So here I have my periodic table and I've zoomed in on chlorine. So in order to, to predict what kind of ions will form, we need to know about the outermost or valence shell of an atom. Okay, so we need to know about the outer shell of an atom in order to predict what kind of ion it will form. So the group number on the periodic table tells you how many electrons are present in the valence shell of the electrons in that group. So there's a lot of words there. Hopefully I can explain what that means. So you know what the groups are, right? Here's group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven, group eight, right? We've talked about this before. We know what the groups are. So they're just the column numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That number tells you a lot more than just what column this particular element is in. It actually tells you how many electrons are in its outermost shell. If I look down this one, group one, I can predict that lithium will have one outermost shell electron. Potassium will also have one outermost shell electron. Carbon will have four outer electrons in its valence shell. Xeon will have eight. So you can see that there's a lot of information that this, these group numbers can actually tell you. So that actually helps us a lot. So using that knowledge, we can actually predict what kind of ion will form. So consider the Na atom. Let's look at the sodium atom once again. It's in group one. So look at your periodic table at home and you can see that sodium is number 11. It's in group one. And therefore has one electron in its valence shell. So in order to achieve a full outer shell, it can do one of two things. Okay, so if I want to achieve a full outer shell, I could either gain seven electrons, grab seven electrons from somewhere, or, so here's the big, the big or, give away the one electron in this outer shell and lose that shell completely. So instead of gaining seven electrons, I could actually just dump the outer shell if I'm sodium. Now, if we think about it, it's easier to get rid of one electron than it is to gain seven, okay? So the natural thing to do would be, let's go the easy way and say, get rid of that one electron. So you can see it's now getting rid of this one electron. And obviously, because it's lost that electron, it's got more positive charges than negative charges. So it creates a net positive charge, which means that it becomes a positive ion. Now, metals in general will create positive ions, while non-metals will form negative ions. Okay, that's in general. Sometimes there are exceptions, but most of the time that's true. Okay. So using the periodic table, explain why helium, neon, argon, and krypton are all stable and don't react with anything. So here we have them, helium, neon, argon, and krypton. Now all of these elements are in group eight. Okay, so if you look on your periodic table at home, you'll see these are in group eight. Now this means that all, all the members of that group have eight electrons in their outer shell, or two in the case of helium, which makes it stable also. Since they all already possess the necessary number of electrons, there's no need for them to interact with other elements to achieve stability. And that's why they don't react. They've already got what they need, so they don't need any more. So they won't bother reacting with other elements because it's just not worthwhile for them. There's nothing for them to gain. So that's why they don't react. And that's why we sometimes call them the noble gases because they're simply just, you know, they're what each element is aspiring to become like. So here's the last question. What type of ion is carbon likely to create? So we have carbon. What kind of ion is it trying, is it likely to create? So check your periodic table once again and you'll see that carbon is in group four. So it can either gain or give away four electrons. It's got four in its outermost shell. It needs to make eight or it gets rid of four. Okay, so to make eight from four, you need another four. So it can gain four electrons or give away four electrons. Now the question becomes, which one's easier? It's equally feasible to do both, gain or give away. The ion that carbon will actually form will depend on the other elements in it's interacting with. So if it's reacting with an element that wants to give away electrons very, very, like strongly wants to give away electrons, 
then it will likely form a negative ion because it will take those electrons in. If it's reacting with elements that want to gain electrons, it will then likely become a positive ion because it will want to give those electrons away. Okay, so it depends very strongly on what type of element the carbon is reacting with. So this is the, and it's the same for all of these going down. It's just a very interesting case of where we have equal numbers on both sides. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on ion formation. We looked at why ions form and how they can be used to achieve stability. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.